I'm Mari Johnson, and in this video, I'm doing a reveal on the NDIS price catalogue. I'm doing this to help people get inside the discussion on NDIS sustainability. And what I'm about to share is either not understood or is not deemed a priority, or people just don't want to talk about it. And it is beyond comprehension that whilst the exorbitant expenditure was happening on digital consultants, the development of algorithms, contracts for independent assessments and robo plans, the catalogue, the critical services infrastructure for the NDIS has been left festering for years. It is in no way a modern catalogue. It is defective and it is antiquated. It is not digital and it is not accessible. I guarantee that by the end of this video, people will be calling for action. Had there been co-design, this would have been a completely different experience. Firstly, it's very hard to get to the catalogue on the NDIS website. You really have to know where to go. So we'll try to search, but the search doesn't work all that well. And here we come to the search site, which is a long listing of um, information about pricing. And we'll go into the 2021-22 prices. And again, uh, a lot of information on that page. And then you have to know to go into the pricing arrangements page. And the word arrangements is a very bureaucratic term. And again, a lot of information on this page. And once again, you have to know to go into the NDIS support catalog uh, spreadsheet. So we'll click on that and we'll download what will be a massive spreadsheet. And here's the catalog. None of it actually makes sense. As you can see, it's not at all accessible. It's not interactive. And remember, this is at the heart of the $30 billion a year NDIS designed specifically for people with disability. It really makes a mockery of accessibility and the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disability. So if you want to do a price comparison between an NDIS price and a price in the market and perhaps what other people pay, it's not possible. There is actually no feedback day to day into the price catalog. So this is just one of the documents comprising uh, the catalog. So we'll go back out to the website and have a look at some of these other documents. Okay, so back to the website and we see on the pricing page again for 2021-22, um, a lot more links and categories, uh, including addenda. So we're gonna jump in and have a look at the COVID uh, addendum. And again, this is uh, another, another document. Again, to be read in conjunction with the spreadsheet. And of course, there were other documents that we need to have a look at. So we'll go back out. And here we see some more information, including importantly, assistive technology. So let's have a little look at the information required for assistive technology. This is a really important area for participants, providers, and also for the agency, but it is enormously complex, enormously complex with a lot of information. Again, that needs to be read in conjunction with the very big spreadsheet. So let's have a little look at our guidelines on assistive technology. And again, it takes you to yet another different looking website. So we'll go into the operational guidelines for assistive technology. And again, here we see another document, a lot of information 
in this document, also filled with links. So it really is a lot for people to go through and very difficult to actually get correct. And there's no way of asking questions. And I think that's one of the most uh, critical, critical issues. So then we'll go back to the website. And in the pricing arrangements archive, there are links to previous years going right the way back, going right the way back to the very beginning of the NDIS. And here is the first one. And again, it takes us to a completely different um, looking website, even with some information here about Ukraine. <laughs> Now, the reason why these historical documents are important is for audit reasons, for AAT reasons, and even for legal processes. But of course, to do a time series analysis would require having to go into each and every one of these um, archives and manually manipulating it. And it's really quite outrageous that in this current economic climate, that providers say that they have to employ extra people just to manually manipulate uh, all this information into their, into their own systems. So it really does generate red tape across the entire sector. And so just while we're finishing off looking at this, um, just a couple of key points. Firstly, it's not the participants that are ripping off the NDIS. This level of complexity really makes it very, very difficult um, to really understand what is the price in the market and how it actually does compare to the price guide. This creates the environment for the NDIS price markup to actually happen. And so my question is, how can there be any pretense of understanding scheme sustainability when the catalog, the critical services infrastructure affecting the entire sector is left like this. So there is actually no fixing the NDIS without really getting into the guts of the operation. There is really no understanding scheme sustainability without understanding the impact of this construction of the catalog on participants and providers across the board. Guaranteed, had there been co-design, this would be a completely different experience. So share this video and really demand change because we all deserve better. So that's the NDIS catalog revealed.